In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of Raphael.js. Um, Raphael.js is a library that renders to SVG, that's Scalable Vector Graphics, um, and in older versions of Internet Explorer, it uh, renders in VML, Vector Markup Language. Um, if you go to raphaeljs.com, you can check out a few of the demos. to get an idea of what the library is capable of. So to get up and running, we're going to want to download the latest version of Raphael.js. And you'll get this page with the entire minified library. And you'll want to say file, save page as, and save it uh, to a location next to the file that you'll be working with in this tutorial. As you can see, I've already saved uh, raphaelmin.js next to a file called index.html. Once that's done, you can go to your editor. And I'm going to start with a basic HTML document and I'll import Raphael. Now, inside my script tag, I'm going to make a window on load function, and anything in between these two curly brackets is going to run once the whole page is loaded, including any images on the page. I'm then going to make a variable called p, which is short for paper, and I'm going to set that equal to Raphael 00 400 400. Um, and what that does is create a Raphael paper at 00 um, xy coordinates in the upper left hand corner of the screen with a width of 400 and a height of 400. Um, to visualize that, I can say p rect 00 400 400. And you can see this outline around the paper. Um, it's pretty obvious how this rectangle function works. It just takes an x, y, width, and height. And I'll make another one, rect 20, 20, 50, 50. And you can see that Raphael defaults to this stroke of black with an empty fill. To change that, I can chain the attribute function, which takes an object literal, and I could say something like fill equals any CSS color. In this case, I'll do red. And I can get rid of the stroke by saying stroke equals none. Next, I'll draw a simple circle, which takes an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a radius. I'll chain the attribute function onto the circle, and I'll say stroke width is 10, which will increase the size of the stroke. Fill, I'll fill with a gradient. Gradients are pretty easy to do with Raphael. First you say the angle of the gradient, then the start color, which I'll do as red, and then the end color, which I'll do as black. And here we have a linear gradient that's happening at 90 degrees. I could change that to say 45 degrees if I want. You can see how it is. <clears throat> now, um, one thing to take into consideration here is that these are uh, elements on the DOM. So if I say inspect element, I can actually see the SVG tag rect. Um, it's got fill of red, stroke of none, x and y is 20, width and height are 50. Uh, for my circle, I've got a x and y of 100 and a radius of 30. 
I've got a gradient fill and a black stroke, stroke width of 100, opacity of 100. So because these are DOM elements, I can put mouse events on them. When I click the red rectangle, I can set its fill to, say, blue. And to make it obvious that this is clickable, I can set the cursor attribute to pointer. Any CSS cursor would work there. If I wanted to add mouse over and mouse out states, I could use the hover function, which takes in two functions, one for mouse over, one for mouse out. And I can say this attribute fill is green. And when I roll out, I can set its fill to red. And when I click it, it turns blue. When I roll off, it turns red again. There are a lot of other mouse events that you can use, um, including touch events for um, mobile devices. And you can see those in the documentation on rafaeljs.com. Raphael has a really nice animation library built into it, and you can use that by just chaining animate. And you can pass an object literal with all the attributes that you want to alter. In my case, I'm going to just alter CX, which is the circle's X position, and I'll set it equal to 300. And I'll say that's going to take one second. And it animates across the screen. Now, I can add an easing function. If I say ease out, or ease in, or ease in out, uh, or something like elastic. And the rest of these are available in the documentation. We can actually uh, transform on animate. So I can say transform S2, which scales up the circle to 200% on both axes. So let's make another rectangle. Move it up a little bit. So I just have rotated that rectangle a little bit, and maybe I'll alter its fill. If I want to add text, I just say p text the location 50 to 50. What I want to say, and there we go with the default settings. Now I can go in with an attribute function and change font family to say Georgia font size to maybe 20. Move it over a little bit. And I could animate that. over the course of, say, 500 milliseconds, elastic. So even just with this little bit of knowledge about Raphael, 
you can be in, begin to create some pretty complex uh, stuff. I guess the one thing that I want to um, point out is that each of these functions uh, return a reference to the newly created object. So if I wanted to say um, uh, click on this circle and do something to this rectangle, I would need to come up to my rectangle and have a reference to it. Just call it red rect. And on my circle, I'll add a click function. And I can say red rect animate y 200 over the course of one second. And that should be good enough to get you started with Raphael JS.